This video is sponsored by AppMaker. AppMaker is a WordPress plugin that converts WooCommerce websites to mobile apps. The mobile app builder helps you create native Android and iOS applications. Get 30% off by being first 200 sign up. Get the link in the description. Hey everyone, welcome back to Educate WordPress. On this channel, we talk everything about WordPress. And today, we're going to talk about Elementor Container Element, which came in recent Elementor update. So, all this time, we have been creating websites with the help of sections, inner sections, and columns, and all those things. To the point that we have a dedicated video on sections, inner sections, and columns. But there are two major drawbacks for using that. The first is sheer amount of code generated just to make a simple section. The second is complexity in creating certain designs. This is where the new container element which uses the Flexbox module comes into play. Flexbox container is a new building block in Elementor that empowers you to efficiently lay out, align and distribute items in a container in a lightweight and responsive manner. With Flexbox containers, you can place widgets directly inside the container, as well as nest containers infinitely. Then you can control the layout and distribution of widgets within the container and adjust your content to every screen size, resulting in greater responsiveness without compromising on speed and also without writing a single line of code. Now let's take a deep dive into the power of Flexbox container. But before we start, I will ask you not to use what I'm about to teach on a live or production website. Make sure you're using a local server or a test website because we are going to learn first and then apply to our designs. Now let's get started. First, we're going to go to Elementor and enable the container element. So, go to Elementor, go, go to Experiments, scroll down and you will find the Flexbox container. Click on Active and then Save Changes. Now let's create a page from scratch. Go to Pages, click on Add New. Let's click on save draft and let's start editing with Elementor. We're going to turn this page into Elementor canvas which will turn this into a blank page or should I say a fresh start. Now the first thing you'll notice is that we have lost the ability to add sections and inner sections. Instead, we have the new container element. Let's discuss the differences this is going to make by adding a pre-existing template made from sections and columns. So this is our template. Let's open Navigator. And as you can see, we have a section inside. We have three columns and they have the elements. This is the standard way of doing it. So we have a section divided into three columns, which this is depicting. 
Now let's delete it and recreate using container. By the way, if you have a pre-existing website or a template saved in your draft, you can convert directly into container by clicking here. You can conveniently convert your designs made in sections and columns to container just by clicking here. But for us, we're going to start from scratch. Click on this plus icon and as you can see, the structures are a bit different from what we have seen in sections. As you can see the differences between the two. We have, we have a lot more designs in here. So let's start by adding a container with three containers inside. Now what I mean, I'm going to show you in a bit. It's pretty amazing. Let's click here. And as you can see, we have a container. Let's open the navigator once again. So as you can see, we have a container and inside we have three more containers. Now previously we saw this was a section and inside we had columns, but container replaces all of them. This is the parent container and inside we have three new containers or the child containers, let's say. So we're going to rename this so that we don't get confused. So this is the parent container and we have three child containers. Like I mentioned earlier, you can add infinite number of containers inside a container. So let's select one of the child containers and see the magic. So like usual, we can add content width, the usual width and the minimum height. Let's add a minimum height to that. We can set overflow and HTML tag just like any other section or column. But the beauty happens in the items tab. So here you can see several options that include direction, align items, justify content and elements gap and wrap. Now, if you're familiar with CSS, these are all the properties that are available in the flex box. If you don't know CSS, don't worry. It's, you don't need to know the CSS flex box in that detail, but I'm telling you it's the same thing. So if you know a bit about CSS, it's a really great way to start. So let's add a element. I'm going to duplicate this and place them here. Let's add an image. So let me tell you what this items tab can do. So let's head over to the parent element and go to items. The first is direction. Direction tell you where the row starts and ends. The first option depicts that it will start from the left and end in the right. So we have the first element as this building and last as this umbrella. So if we do it reverse row, as you can see, the building or the first element started from the right and it went over to umbrella to the left. So this is row reversed. Similarly, we can place it in form of columns. So the first element is the building. The middle one is the same and the last one is umbrella. It is from top to bottom. In a similar manner, this is bottom to top order so as you can see the building starts from the top and it and the images end with the umbrella on the top let's go back to rows now let's start talking about align items and justify content for that i have reduced the widths of the columns and images to make you show what they really do so let's click on this parent element Go to items and let's see what align items does. 
first of all it's already in the flex start mode so let's change it to center so these are all centralized in the section this is flex end that means it will drive down to the bottom and this is stretch that means it will stretch all the way to cover the section so let's see what justify content can do this is flex start that means everything will be stick to the starting that is top left corner the next is flex center that means everything will be mushed in to the center to the top center of the section or should I say container the next is flex end so as you can probably tell all the elements are stick to the top right corner without without the spaces between the element containers itself this is space between this is space around and this is space evenly you can also increase the elements gap since we are on the parent container these containers are our elements inside so let's start increasing them and as you can see this is how it works you can also add a flex wrap property this is wrap and this is no wrap which allows us to add the content inside the content so another beautiful thing about this update is that you can directly add responsiveness for each element so when I change the direction like let's say this is row but in tablet I want row reversed for that I'm going to go to here this icon that says desktop change it to tablet and change my design according to my need let's say I want to add reverse row so this is reverse row so when I switch back to desktop my contents are as per the desktop version that I need and when I change the tablet inside here it changes to tablet Xbox module or the container element also solves one of the problems that I had while creating a blog loop this was the blog website that we created and one of the problem was that if I click on this image nothing happens what I wanted it to do is that it would lead to the blog whenever I click on this image but when I created this loop it wasn't that possible it was possible but I had to add link to every image and to every text so it was a bit complicated by the way we have created this blog website in one of our tutorials I will link it in the description so you can create this blog website all by yourself so moving on to the topic we can go to the container and in the HTML tag we can add a tag which is the anchor tag for HTML which allows us to link to another website so for example I wanted to link this image to one of my blogs I could do that easily by adding the blogs link here or just by clicking on the dynamic content if you have Elementor Pro and adding the blog link so this is one of the life saving things of container element Now let's head over to advanced properties of the container module. Now as you can see we have align self order size as new properties. Align self basically means the alignment of the items inside the container. So as you can see if I choose this container and I choose align start it will align all the items to the start that are inside the container similarly there's center end and stretch it will stretch all the items to contain the entire container then there is order if I have two or more elements it will define the order like this is the start this is the end and you can even choose 
custom order i'll leave it at start and then there is size there's flex grow which will grow the element let me choose an image so that you can better understand so this is flex grow as you can see the area where images has grown this is shrink and you can add custom flex grow and flex shrink according to the screen size as well now that's all the properties there are in the new flexbox module or the container element in the next video we will create a website using the container element that's it for this video thank you for watching like if you find this video useful and subscribe thank you